Welcome, medical students, to today's lecture on Miller-Fisher syndrome. Miller-Fisher syndrome is a rare neurological disorder that falls under the umbrella of Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS. It is characterized by a triad of symptoms, including ophthalmoplegia, paralysis of the eye muscles, ataxia, lack of muscle coordination, and areflexia, absence of deep tendon reflexes. In this lecture, we will discuss the pathophysiology, clinical presentation, diagnosis, treatment, prognosis, and other pertinent aspects of Miller-Fisher syndrome. Miller-Fisher syndrome is believed to be an autoimmune disorder, where the body's immune system mistakenly attacks components of nerve cells. The exact cause of this immune response is unknown, but it is thought to be triggered by an antecedent infection, most commonly upper respiratory or gastrointestinal infections. Molecular mimicry, in which the immune system mistakenly recognizes self-antigens as foreign due to their similarities to pathogens, is another proposed mechanism. This autoimmune response leads to the production of specific antibodies, known as anti-GQ1B antibodies, which target gangliosides, a type of glycolipid found on the surface of nerve cells. These antibodies disrupt normal nerve impulse transmission in several parts of the nervous system, including the peripheral nerves, cranial nerves, and brainstem. Anti-GQ1B antibodies are considered highly specific for Miller-Fisher syndrome and are present in approximately 90% of cases. These antibodies bind to GQ1B gangliosides, which are expressed abundantly in the oculomotor nerves, cerebellum, and dorsal root ganglia. The binding of anti-GQ1B antibodies to gangliosides leads to complement activation, inflammation, and subsequent damage to the myelin sheath and axons. This antibody-mediated attack results in the characteristic features of Miller-Fisher syndrome, such as ophthalmoplegia, ataxia, and areflexia. The onset of Miller-Fisher syndrome is typically acute, occurring within days to a few weeks after an antecedent infection. Patients often present with a combination of the classic triad of symptoms, ophthalmoplegia, ataxia, and areflexia. Ophthalmoplegia manifests as diplopia, double vision, ptosis, drooping of the eyelids, and impaired eye movements, especially in the horizontal gaze. Ataxia primarily affects the trunk and limb movements, resulting in unsteady gait, dysmetria, and intention tremors. Areflexia, or the absence of deep tendon reflexes, is a key diagnostic feature of Miller-Fisher syndrome. In addition to these core manifestations, patients may also experience sensory disturbances, such as paresthesias, abnormal sensations, or numbness, particularly in the extremities. Other possible symptoms include dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, dysarthria, slurred speech, facial weakness, and generalized weakness. Due to the overlap of symptoms with other neurological disorders, a comprehensive differential diagnosis is essential in cases suspected to be Miller-Fisher syndrome. Conditions that may present similarly include other variants of Guillain-Barre syndrome, especially the Bickerstaff brainstem encephalitis variant, acute cerebellar ataxia, acute hemorrhagic leukoencephalitis, and pontine stroke, among others. Diagnostic criteria that aid in distinguishing Miller-Fisher syndrome from its differentials include the presence of ophthalmoplegia, ataxia, areflexia, absence of significant limb weakness, and the presence of anti-GQ1B antibodies. Electrophysiological studies, including nerve conduction studies, NCS, and needle electromyography, EMG, play a crucial role in the diagnosis of Miller-Fisher syndrome. NCS may show reduced or absent compound muscle action potentials, CMAPs, in affected nerves, reflecting the impaired conduction in peripheral nerves. Similarly, needle EMG may reveal fibrillation potentials and positive sharp waves, indicating ongoing denervation in affected muscles. These findings are consistent with the axonal subtype of Guillain-Barre syndrome. Neuroimaging studies, such as magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, are generally unremarkable in Miller-Fisher syndrome. However, MRI may be useful in excluding other potential causes, such as structural lesions or vascular abnormalities. In rare cases, brainstem involvement may be observed on MRI, particularly in variants of Miller-Fisher syndrome with additional manifestations like facial weakness, Fisher syndrome. These findings further support the involvement of the central nervous system in this disorder. The management of Miller-Fisher syndrome primarily focuses on supportive care and treatment of the underlying autonomic neuropathy. Intravenous immunoglobulin, IVIG, and plasma exchange, PLEX, are the two main treatment modalities used to accelerate recovery. IVIG, administered as a high-dose infusion, helps modulate the immune system and counteract the autoimmune attack. PLEX involves removing blood plasma from the patient, separating it from the cellular components, and then returning the cells to the patient while replacing the plasma with donor plasma. 
the plasma exchange procedure helps remove circulating autoantibodies and other inflammatory mediators. The prognosis of Miller-Fisher syndrome is generally favorable, with the majority of patients showing significant recovery within weeks to months. The course of the disease is characterized by a progressive phase, followed by a plateau phase, and finally, a recovery phase. Most patients regain normal or near-normal neurological function, although some residual deficits may persist. Long-term outcomes are generally favorable, with only a small proportion of patients experiencing recurrent or chronic symptoms. While Miller-Fisher syndrome primarily affects adults, it can also occur in children, constituting a distinct entity called pediatric Miller-Fisher syndrome. The clinical presentation and immunopathogenesis are similar to the adult form, and the treatment approaches are also shared. However, pediatric cases may exhibit some unique features, such as behavioral changes or altered mental status, requiring additional considerations and close monitoring in these patients. Miller-Fisher syndrome can exhibit variations and overlaps with other neurological disorders. For instance, Fisher syndrome is characterized by the presence of facial weakness in addition to the classic triad. Bickerstaff brainstem encephalitis represents another variant, presenting with additional brainstem involvement, altered consciousness, and long-track signs. Overlap syndromes, such as GQ1B seronegative Miller-Fisher syndrome and pharyngeal cervical brachial variant, further highlight the heterogeneity of this disorder and necessitate an individualized approach to management. Miller-Fisher syndrome is considered a rare condition, accounting for only a small percentage of Guillain-Barre syndrome cases. It has a predilection for males and tends to occur more commonly in adults, particularly those in the third to sixth decades of life. Although no clear racial or ethnic predilection has been established, individual studies have reported variations in different populations. It is worth noting that the true incidence and prevalence of Miller-Fisher syndrome remain uncertain due to its rarity and potential underdiagnosis. To solidify our understanding of Miller-Fisher syndrome, let's discuss a few illustrative case studies. These cases will highlight the various clinical presentations, differential diagnoses, diagnostic workup, treatment strategies, and outcomes encountered in managing patients with this disorder. In conclusion, Miller-Fisher syndrome is a distinct variant of Guillain-Barre syndrome characterized by a triad of ophthalmoplegia, ataxia, and areflexia. It is an autoimmune disorder mediated by anti-GQ1B antibodies that leads to immune-mediated damage to peripheral nerves and brainstem structures. Diagnosis is primarily based on clinical presentation, electrophysiological findings, and the presence of anti-GQ1B antibodies. Management involves supportive care and immunomodulatory treatments such as Ibogaine Plex. Most patients experience favorable outcomes, with significant recovery in the majority of cases. Understanding the pathophysiology, clinical presentation, diagnostic approach, and treatment options in Miller-Fisher syndrome is crucial for medical professionals to provide optimal care to patients affected by this rare neurological disorder.